So in this video, I want everyone to step out of their comfort zones. So this is my own personal recipe. This is a gourmet deep dish seafood pizza. So if you are interested in making this, keep watching. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. So the very first thing you want to do is grab all your ingredients. Of course, the grocery list is going to be in the description box. I will send you to the grocery store. It'll have everything that you need on it. So you want to get yourself a shallot that is normally in the vegetable, the fresh vegetable section. You also need fresh spinach, fresh basil, and fresh dill. You need a couple different herbs and spices. I have some uh, minced garlic here. I have Italian seasoning, red pepper flakes, dried parsley, and I also have some lemon pepper seasoning black pepper and zazan so i used about one to two tablespoons of each keep in mind that we are going to season the seafood and then we are actually going to season the pizza as well when we build the pizza and of course you do need some pizza though i suggest that you either make it fresh or you go to your local italian market and they will have bars of pizza dough for you i got this recipe from sherry and morris kitchen i'm gonna link that channel below in the description box as well next you are going to need two kinds of cheeses i did the same ones except for i did um, shredded fresh mozzarella and then I did the individual balls of mozzarella cheese just to top it please do not use pre-shredded mozzarella cheese it is not the same we do not want processed we want fresh and I got all this from my local Italian market so right here these are the herbs and spices I'm going to use to season the seafood so I do have about one tablespoon of uh, lemon pepper seasoning about one tablespoon of cracked black pepper. I also have one tablespoon of dried parsley flakes. The last thing I have is about a half a tablespoon of zazan. The zazan is very powerful, so you do not need a lot of that. I did not use Old Bay because I'm, I'm really not a fan of Old Bay, and this is a pizza, so I do not want the seafood to overpower the pizza. Yes, we are making a seafood pizza, but it should not only taste like the seafood that you selected. You are simply going to rub the seasoning on the salmon and the shrimp. Um, you can use as much as you want. You can use as little as you want. But right here, you just see me kind of eyeballing it. Please keep in mind, you do not want to over season your seafood because, again, it will overpower the whole pizza. So just go ahead and sprinkle some on top. We're going to do the salmon filet first, and then you just want to flip it over, sprinkle some more, and then make sure that you get the sides as well. So after you get the salmon seasoned, you want to set that to the side. Make sure you bring that filet back up to room temperature by just letting it sit out for about 10 to 15 minutes. The next thing that you're going to do, you're going to season the shrimp with the exact same seasoning. So the seasoning mixture that we made was just strictly for the seafood. So after you get the shrimp seasoned, you can cut it, you can chop it, but you want to chop it into bite-sized pieces. I find that using kitchen scissors is easier and more convenient but if you want to use a knife go ahead and please do not forget to wash and devein your shrimp if you see a vein go ahead and pull it out but please do not forget to do that um, that's one of the worst experiences is to bite a piece of shrimp and you get a vein so you are going to repeat the process until all of the shrimp is cut up into bite sizes again you can use a knife if you want to if you're um, pressed for time but every time I cook I tell people if you are rushing or you know you're you, you just don't feel like cooking don't cook because your meal is not going to turn out the way that you want it to turn out so after you get the shrimps cut up you are going to do the exact same thing if you take them directly from the refrigerator and you wash them and you clean them and you devein them you want to bring them back up to room temperature for even cooking and also keep in mind that this is a pizza. You do want everything bite-sized. But if you do not want to chop up your shrimp at all, um, you don't have to. But for this recipe, everything is bite-sized. And it is to your liking, to your size. But just make sure you don't have really, really big chunks. So after you get done with the shrimp, you are going to wash and sanitize your station. The next thing you're going to do is change your gloves, wash your hands, and then put on a new set of gloves. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to take one shallot. You only need one. They are pretty big. And you are going to peel the outer layer. 
once you peel the hour later, you're going to cut the tip off and then you are going to proceed to slicing it. So what we want is small cubes. We do not want really, really big chunks. We do not want slices either. We specifically want cubes. To achieve these cubes, what you're going to do is simply take the shallot and you're going to slice it vertically and then horizontally. It really doesn't matter which way that you do it. The cubes are going to come out the exact same if you do vertically, horizontally, horizontally, vertically. So what you're going to do after you get them sliced, you are going to begin to chop them and once you chop them you will see that the cubes start to form so please do not be alarmed just watch see what i'm doing here i'm going to provide a video that will show you how to achieve large cubes small cubes and slices so once you get the slices done you are going to begin to slice it and you'll see the cubes as i'm showing you here so you want to make sure you are holding it with your knuckles pointing toward the knife blade and then you're going to guide glide the knife back and forth if your fingers are flat you will cut your fingers so do not lay your fingers flat that's a lot of people are scared to do this because they think that they are going to cut their fingers that is true you will but you will only cut your fingers if your fingers are lying flat if the blade is not touching your knuckles you are doing it incorrectly if it is you are fine so you are going to continue to do this until the whole shallot is chopped. Of course, you don't chop the root, but the closer you get to the root, the smaller that it becomes. So you might have to just change your technique, um, keep the same formation, but you might have to hold the knife differently. Then after you get that done, what you're going to do is you are just going to take those and you are going to sit these to the side. We want really small cubes, so you might have to run your knife through like I'm doing here because I wanted them smaller than what... I actually had them in the beginning. So if you want bigger, you want to a bit bigger. But for this recipe, I like, I wanted it small, smaller than what I had. And we are actually going to caramelize these in, later in the video. So after you get the shallot sliced up, you're going to just set them to the side. They should look just like this. I'm, you, they should be that size. The next thing you're going to do is take three tablespoons of olive oil and then two tablespoons of butter. You are going to get that melted in a saute pan. If you do not have a saute pan, you can use whichever pan that you have, but this is the recipe and this is what I use. So you want to make sure that the butter is completely melted before you go to the next step. So the next step is going to be just to take the salmon and lay it into the pan. It does not matter which way you lay it because we are not going to cook this all the way through because it's going to finish cooking in the oven because it is a topping for the pizza. So I laid it skin side down. It doesn't matter which way you want to lay it. After about two minutes, you are going to flip it. You do want to crust because we do want one side to be kind of crispy. Once you flip it, you want to give it about another two minutes on the other side. Keep in mind, we are not cooking it all the way through. After that two minutes, you are going to remove that salmon. Do not rinse out the pan. The salmon should look just like this. Go ahead and set it to the side. So now we're going to take about one tablespoon of that garlic, that minced garlic, and you are going to put that into the pan. And then the next thing you're going to do is add all of the shrimp. When you add all of the shrimp, you just want to shake the pan just a little bit just so it can have an even coating at the bottom. And then the next thing you're going to do, you're going to allow this to cook for only about a minute. Again, we are not going to cook this all the way through either because it is going to be a topping on the pizza and it will finish cooking in the oven. So after you let this cook for about one minute, you do want to keep stirring it just to make sure that it is not cooking all the way through. And then you are simply going to move the shrimp and then we are going to add the rest of the minced garlic. Keep in mind, we are not going to rinse this pan out. So after you get the garlic into the pan, you are going to grab the shallots and you are going to add the shallots to the pan as well. So once you add the shallots, you are just going to combine them with the butter, the oil, and the garlic. And you do want to actually make sure that the pan is actually turned a little bit down because you do not want the minced garlic to burn. So you want to just give that a quick stir and then you're going to begin to season this mixture. So this is going to be the shallot, spinach, and the garlic mixture that is actually going to be a topping as well. So after you get that mixed around, you're going to allow that to cook for a couple minutes. And then you are going to add about a half a tablespoon of red pepper flakes. You can add more, but this is where the spice is going to come from. So you do not want to add too much. 
The next thing that you are going to do is you are going to add one tablespoon of Italian seasoning. Please keep in mind, again, I do not use extra salt. You do not see me putting salt in here. There's enough sodium from the other spices and the seasonings that will take up for that. So the next thing you're going to do is take about a half a tablespoon, about one pinch of fresh dill. This is an option. This will bring an extra layer of flavor. You're going to put that in there as well. And now we are going to add two tablespoons of butter. This will caramelize this mixture, and that is exactly what you want. You want to, you not only want to saute it, but you do want to caramelize it. So butter will help in doing that so what you're going to do is you're just going to allow it to cook for another couple minutes just until the butter is melted and then give it about a minute to actually soak up that butter if you do not want this mixture on your pizza um, and you want to change it up you do not have to do this step but this is what i did because i felt like this added more flavor to the pizza and it actually did so once you get the butter melted in the pan just like i'm doing here you are going to grab the spinach so when you grab the spinach it should be about two cups of fresh spinach please do not use frozen frozen has a lot of water in it more water than the fresh kind so you want to get the fresh ones just pick it off the stems do about two cups and put that into the pan now we're going to saute the spinach you do not need to add any extra liquid at this point just keep moving the spinach around and it will wilt down on its own if you do not have or if you cannot find fresh spinach what you want to do is you can use a frozen kind you just want to make sure that you take a cheesecloth or some kind of cloth and you drain all the water off because if it's too much water in the spinach your crust will be really really soggy because the water will seep through so sauteing this spinach um getting it well down it shouldn't take more than about two minutes as you can see here this was real time you just see me continuously stirring it and stirring it and it wilted down so after you get the spinach wilted down you are going to take a fourth a cup of white wine you're going to add that to the middle of the mixture and you are going to turn the heat all the way up. You want to turn the heat on high. What we want to do is we want to cook off the wine, but the wine will create a sauce for this mixture. And we're going to top the pizza with this. So it is very important to remember to turn this mixture all the way up on high so the wine can cook off. I said it again because people will forget and think that it's supposed to be liquid. You should not see any liquid left in this pan. It should turn into a sauce and the sauce should be absorbed by the shallots, the garlic, and the spinach. So right here, you can see that it's completely gone. Um, if you feel like you need it to sit on there longer, just go ahead and do that. But for the most part, it shouldn't take more than about probably five to six minutes. No more than eight, I know that for a fact. So once you get this done, you're going to put this to the side. And now we are going to work on the dough. So you want to take some semolina flour and then you are going to dust the surface with that flour. If you do not have semolina flour, please do not use white flour. If you do not have this flour, what I want you to use is cornmeal. So I want you to do as I'm doing here with the semolina flour. You're going to dust the surface and you're going to spread it out to about the size that you think that the ball of dough will be when you roll it onto the surface. So the first thing you're going to do, we're going to do a different technique. Normally you would punch the dough in the bowl, but I'm going to show you a different way to do it because we want this kind of like a deep dish pizza. So you're going to put the dough onto the surface and then you're going to dust the top of the dough with a little bit more semolina flour. At that point, you're going to punch the dough. So the reason why you punch the dough is to get it like flattened out. So before you punch it, you are going to just shape it until your desired ball. And then you are going to do exactly what I'm doing. Like you want to punch the dough just like this. So after you get done punching the dough, you are specifically going to take your fingertips. So you're going to do as I'm showing you right here. You are going to firmly press the dough down. So you want to make sure you get around the crust area because you do not want any bubbles or any air pockets in this dough. So I, it's not traditionally a deep dish. I just wanted a fluffy crust because of it being a seafood pizza. This is the way that I decided to do this. So after you get it firmly pressed with your fingertips, you are going to take a heavy rolling pin. You're going to start from the middle and you are going to begin to shape the dough. A deep dish, normally they do it in like a square or they do it in a circle. But for this recipe, I wanted to go ahead and do a circle. But we used our fingertips because it flattened it out and then in the oven, it'll puff back up. It'll be a little bit more puffier than usual, but it will be cooked. 
So you want to just make sure you're shaping it and it does not have to be perfect. So if you have a regular wooden rolling pin, you can go ahead and use that. But if you have a marble one like this that's a little bit heavy, go ahead and use that. So the next thing you're going to do is take a pizza pan of your choice and then you're going to line it with aluminum foil. This step is very crucial. If you do not do this, your pizza will stick to the aluminum foil. You want to coat the aluminum foil with oil. If you have the spray oil, go ahead and use that. But please make sure that you coat it with oil. So next you are going to shape the dough to the pan. So what you want to do is just move it around. If you do not want it to be the shape of the pan, you do not have to have it the shape of the pan, but for the most part, that is what the pan is for. So now we are going to prick the dough, and that just means taking a fork. I do not suggest that you use a knife because a knife will create slits, and we just want, uh, we want pricks. That's why it's called pricking the dough. So you want to just take a fork. I know everybody has a fork. Just go ahead and do what I'm doing here. This will, re this will create steam pockets and allow the dough to cook in the middle and cook all the way through. You also want to make sure that you get the crust. As you can see, I did the crust, the edges first, and you want to make sure that you do that because there might be air bubbles that pop up. And if you prick the dough, that will not happen. So once you get done doing that, you are going to create the herb garlic butter. And that is simply just four tablespoons of butter. You want to add one tablespoon of minced garlic, a couple pinches of Italian seasoning, and about a couple pinches of parsley. And then you're just going to get that mixed up together and you are simply going to take a paintbrush. If you do not have one of the kitchen paintbrushes, you can use a spoon, but you wanna make sure that you spread it around evenly. So you're going to take the brush and you're first you're going to start with the crust. Now a normal pizza, I would just do the crust um, with this mixture. But because this is a seafood pizza and we want a lot of flavor, I'm going to I'm going to spread it onto the whole dough. But the first thing that I'm going to do is do the outside first because the most of, of this should go on the crust. So once again, you're going to start with the crust and then you're going to go ahead and lightly do the inside of the pizza. If you are somebody that does not like the crust or just don't eat the put the crust to a um, pizza, if you do this, you will eat the crust. I can guarantee you that you will like the crust. And then if you want to add a little bit more flavor, you can take some freshly um, shredded Parmesan cheese and you can put that on the outside as well if you want like a cheese crust. So right here, you just see me painting it whatever I have left and you do want to use all of the butter this is four tablespoons of butter do keep in mind but you do not want to soak this dough in butter you just want to lightly brush it like I'm doing here so you just want to make sure that you get all of the garlic and the seasonings out the garlic especially and the Italian seasonings play an important role of the flavor of the dough so once it bakes it will get embedded into the dough and you will have a flavored crust so after that, you are going to start to build your pizza. So we're going to first start with the pasta sauce. This is my homemade pasta sauce. I'll link the video to that below in the description box. And the first thing you're going to do is take about a spoonful and then you're going to take the back of the spoon and you're going to evenly distribute that around the pizza. Once you get that even, you're going to take another spoonful and then... You are going to shape the pizza. You're going to shape your pizza by just bringing it to the edge and then shaping out the crust, just like I'm doing here. You should not need more than two scoops of the pasta sauce. If you do this in a deep dish container, you might need a third one. But for the most part, they put two at the bottom and then one goes on top to create the deep dish. But we are not going to do that. This is the way that I decided to do mine. So next, we're going to add another layer of flavor, and we are going to take a couple pinches of red pepper flakes. So you're going to sprinkle the red pepper flakes over the pizza sauce, and it does not have to be a lot. I did about two pinches. Um, if you do not want to do this step, you do not have to, but this will add an extra flavor. And keep in mind that this is where the heat comes from, and we also have this in the garlic spinach and shallot mixture so once you get the red pepper flakes sprinkled onto the pasta sauce you're going to take some italian seasoning and you're going to do the exact same thing again if you want to skip this step 
you can but i do not suggest that you skip it so you're going to just go ahead and do about two pinches of that if you want to do one and you if you're doing a smaller pizza i would say do one but if you do about a medium pizza this size you want to do about two so after that you are going to take some fresh basil so the fresh basil you're going to take about i took three leaves three large leaves and you're going to do the chiffonade technique where you just pile them on top of each other you roll them up and then you slice them and that will create the slices that i made you'll see them in a in a couple seconds on the clip where i they turned into strings you are just going to run your knife through and you want them fairly thin so you want thinly sliced um slices because you do not want a lot of this and this is a very powerful herb like I said before. So I want them to look just like this. And then you're simply going to take them and you're going to sprinkle them around the whole pizza. So at this point, you should be able to smell like a nice aroma of the pizza and it's not even cooked yet. The basil will automatically give off another scent and another flavor to this pizza. So the next step we're going to do is we are going to grab the cheese so the cheese that i selected in the beginning i told you i'll tell you to get um, freshly shredded mozzarella cheese the cheese that you will want to get is the cheese that is not in a pack so if you go to an italian market they normally have freshly grated mozzarella cheese you know it's fresh because it'll say fresh and it'll come in a container not a pack so please do not get the pack so the way to do the cheese is you want to sprinkle it on the pizza and make sure that the whole pizza is covered and you want to make sure you do not see any pasta sauce. So right here, you should see me sprinkling it um, around and covering up all the red sauce. It does not have to be perfect, but for the most part, that is what you want to do. So now we're going to take some of the mini balls of mozzarella and you want to cut some up. I think I did about five um, or six. I didn't even use them all because you don't want a lot of these. You just want this to be another topping to the pizza. So go ahead and grab some fresh mozzarella balls, the mini ones, not the large ones, as well as freshly grated mozzarella cheese when you go to the grocery store. I'm sorry, not grated, but shredded. Yeah, you know what I mean. So the next thing you're going to do is you are going to take that garlic, spinach, and shallot mixture that we sauteed together with that white wine and you are going to just distribute that all over the pizza. So you want to make sure you get all of the shallots. But this is the reason as to why I said to make small cubes. Because there is a lot of flavors and there are a lot of toppings on this pizza. And you do not want it to be overpowering. So when you spread the spinach mixture around, you just want to make sure that they are flat. And you want to make sure that you do distribute it in a nice even way. And as you can see here, like I said, there is no liquid. You should not see any liquid. Um, this is why you need to make sure that the wine is completely cooked off and it is turned into a sauce before you remove it from the pan. So the next thing we're going to do is we're not going to take a lot of these, but this is uh, marinated artichoke hearts. And they knew, these normally come in like a glass jar. Um, if you have time to marinate them, uh, it does take about three to four weeks. If you have some, just lay it in your refrigerator like I do because I'm a chef. <laughs> Go ahead and use them. But if you do not, they do have them in a can and they are fresh and they are marinated. So you just want to take a couple slices. As you can see here, the leaves peel right off because they are really, really tender. And you only need about, I use two of these. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the shrimp and you're going to sprinkle the shrimp around. You want a good amount of shrimp. You don't want too much, but you do want a good amount of shrimp. Um, this pizza will feed eight to 10 people, depending on the way that you do slice it but this is a good appetizer like this is not a meal that you would do for like a dinner this is definitely a good lunch and this is definitely a appetizer meal if you have a four or five you know six course meal so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your salmon and don't be alarmed because again remember we did not cook this all the way through you did not want to cook it all the way through because if you cook it all the way through and then you put it in the oven once it's cooked the salmon will be overcooked. And if you've ever had overcooked salmon, it is really, really, really dry. So the technique for the salmon is to create the flakes. So the salmon should be tender because we cooked it for about four minutes and you should just be able to push it and you'll see the flakes start to come off. You do not want to chop the salmon. You do not want to do anything. You just want to pick it up and break it apart. And you want to make sure that 
it is flaked. So you're just going to do exactly like I showed you and just push it and then you'll see it start to break apart because it's very tender. And again, do not be alarmed by the raw pieces because we did not cook it all the way through. So you kind of want to add a little bit more of the salmon. You want to use most of the salmon filet right here. As you can see, it's just flaking apart. Um, or you can make a second pizza and just do like one with shrimp and then one with salmon. But this is the recipe that I decided to put together was with the shrimp and the salmon. So after you get the salmon broken up and distributed onto the pizza, now we are going to take those um, small mozzarella balls that we sliced in half and you're going to randomly place this around the pizza. You do not need a lot. Um, you can use as much as you want, but try not to overload the top of the pizza with the mozzarella balls. So if you do not want to add the uh, fresh mozzarella balls, you do not have to. But again, this is just a recipe that I decided to create. And it did, it did turn out the way that I wanted it to turn out. And it was pretty good. So if you don't want to do this step, you can, you can skip it by all means. And you can just put it in the oven like that. And then you can eat your pizza. So it should look just like this before you put it in the oven. At this point, you want to preheat the oven to 385. And you are going to bake this pizza for about 30 minutes. So fresh out the oven, it should look like this. Here's a close-up. You should see that the salmon and the shrimp are completely cooked through. And the cheese is melted. So now what we're going to do is remove the pizza from the pan. And I'll show you why. You should make sure that you oil it because it should slide right out just like this. If you see any pieces of um, aluminum foil on the pizza, just go ahead and take it off. But you do want to search around the pizza just to make sure there's no aluminum foil. If you have parchment paper, use that. But I always use aluminum foil. So now we're going to slice the pizza. You can slice it to your desired amount. Now do keep in mind that if you are doing this as an appetizer, you want the slices to be small. If you're doing this as a lunch, you want them to kind of be, you know, medium slices so again you can slice it however you want to slice it uh, when I slice this size pizza which is medium I got eight slices if you want bigger slices then slice bigger slices you might be able to get like six if you want bigger and then if you want more then you can probably get about 12 pieces um, out of this if you want to make it into an appetizer so do take your time and then do keep in mind that this is very very hot you can see the steam and you are going to see the steam as you slice it so you would pair this with a white wine if you were having this as an appetizer or if you were just having this as just you know a, a snack if somebody a late night snack <laughs> i would say um i would pair this with a white wine not a red wine so after you get it sliced, um, of course, you're going to grab yourself um, some plates. Um, again, it does not have to be perfect. I'm pretty sure everybody's going to eat it anyways. And it should look exactly like this. You have just created yourself a deep dish seafood gourmet pizza. So now you're just going to plate it, grab yourself a slice. And again, keep in mind, it is hot. So please try not to burn yourself. And then you're just going to plate it up and go ahead and serve it. So I hope everyone enjoys this recipe. This is, again, my own personal recipe. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share if you would like to. And I will see you guys in my next video.